Dear Mr. Secretary General, dear members of the General Assembly, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to address you. And the main thing I would like to talk about today is collectivity. Eight months ago, I addressed your organization for the first time, and I'm grateful for all the support that you, both as an organization and as countries, have given to our people, to our right to live freely. The vast majority of you support you and General Assembly resolutions that defend a rules-based international order. And your personal position, Mr. Almagro, serves precisely to protect the key foundations of international relations, the equality of all nations and guarantees for every nation that its destiny will not be broken by other states through military or political violence. Our common goal of all leaders and states that truly value human life is a world in which violence does not dominate, a world in which the UN Charter is truly respected by everyone from the smallest to the largest countries, a world in which not only no new frozen conflicts arise, but in which the majority of nations realize that any war in a common global challenge a threat to the world and not the suffering of only those against whom this aggression is committed. And have we become closer to such a world since my first address to you? I'm sure, yes, we have. Although Russian aggression still goes on, although Russian does not stop even in the face of catastrophic crimes of ecocide. Probably you all heard that this month Russian occupiers blew up the dam and other structures of the Kakhovka hydroelectric plant and destroyed one of the largest reservoirs in Europe, deliberately flooding a huge area, dozens of cities and villages were underwater. The one in Russia who gave the order to destroy the dam and the Kakhovka reservoir understood what he was doing, understood that it would leave entire regions of our country without drinking water, understood that thousands and thousands of hectares of fertile soil would become a desert. God forbid that anyone in the world faces such a crime. But despite this and all other Russian terrorist attacks, we are still pushing the aggressor to defeat both by force of arms and by force of diplomacy. Ladies and gentlemen, last year I presented the Ukrainian peace formula and since then we have already involved dozens of nations in working on its implementation. We are also preparing the Global Peace Summit which will specifically determine which state will help in which point of the peace formula. There is no, no alternative to it. Russia has brought war to the territory of our country. Russian missiles and artillery are burning our cities and villages. Russian ecocides are destroying the nature of our country. So it is Ukrainians, who best understand what exactly needs to be done to restore peace. But to indeed restore peace, we need collective efforts. And of course, in particular, your support, your leadership. I invite you to work with us and all the free nations of the world on implementation of the peace formula. And I invite you to join the preparation of the Global Peace Summit. We must become a global community in the full sense of this word so that peace for every nation is fully guaranteed. One cannot protect peace on his own, but war cannot overcome the collective desire for peace. May your power become the power of peace too. Thank you for your attention. Long live freedom. Slava Ukraini.